Hey everybody, Darren Starr, owner, prep coach here at Five Star Physique, also host of The Drop Set, which is a bodybuilding podcast I put out usually a couple episodes weekly. Um, you can check that out. The uh, website for that is thedropset.com. You can subscribe via Spotify, iTunes, check out the main website at fivestarphysique.com. Also, you can find everywhere to follow me on social media if you're interested there. So today I wanted to talk about posing and progress picks, two topics that are very, very closely related. And so I figured that it was best to just uh, dive into both of them in one video here. So we're going to tackle this in three distinct sections. So in section number one, I'm going to take you on a tour of my house and I will literally be carrying you around um, on a tripod as we experiment with lighting locations, um, different lighting locations throughout the house. So we're going to try a couple spots upstairs. We're gonna try a couple spots downstairs in the basement, which is the area that I usually use. I'm gonna see if I can find a better spot than what I typically use. And also just talk about, okay, what works, what doesn't work about this. Um, you can see me set up in front of the camera and see like how washed out I am in certain locations, how I look better in other locations as well. Um, clearly every house, every situation and setup is different. So this isn't going to apply directly to you, but you can use some of the same concepts um, and the same process that I use to find a good spot to take pics in your house. So um, the other thing that we're going to do, uh, number two, is going to be a quick little primer on how to flare your lats because it's an absolutely essential thing when it comes to um, taking progress pics regardless of what your purpose is. If you're going to compete, if you're not, what we don't want to do are take mugshot photographs where everything is relaxed and you're standing there with horrible posture uh, because you don't necessarily see any significant changes in muscular development over time if you're not actually trying to show it. So that's what we want to do is just make sure that, you know, uh, flaring your lats is a skill um, that you have to learn. And I will not make the promise that you will know exactly how to do it and you'll be a master of it by the time we're done with this video. But you'll have an idea of how to practice it at least and how to get better at it. So that'll be number two. And then number three, we're going to walk through the quarter turns, front, side, back, other side. Again, whether you're competing or not, these are typically the photos that I want to see. If you are competing in a specific division, I may, may want to see additional photos as well, um, additional poses. But these are the main ones that I pretty much always want to see. So let's get good at them. Let's master them. Show ourselves off as best we can. And then everyone's going to be happier going forward. So let's get down to it. Okay, so as I promised, here we go. Um, I'm just carrying you around on my tripod. We're gonna kind of go throughout the house and explore some things. You'll have to forgive me, I did not clean up before we started this. So let me show you an example of what's probably not gonna work, and that is pointing your camera at some big open windows. Um, hi, yeah, can you see much detail here? No, not really. So um, usually you want to light the subject. In this case, that is you, which means that this will work better. So all those big windows, we've got three here, a big door, and then three more right there. If we put the camera behind those, or those behind the camera, and then step back from it. Okay, now you can see me a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, there isn't a whole lot of detail here. Like if we look at the legs, I mean, there's a little bit of separation showing, but I know what they're supposed to look like, and it's a little soft looking. So um, this is a case where, you know, too much light can actually be a bad thing. So what if we come at it just a little bit more obliquely? So. Um, here's the wall back here. So what if I kind of set it up so it's at a little bit of an angle here and we try to, you know, soften some of that light. Okay, now this looks a little bit better. Again, leg check here. So you can see some of the detail coming out a little bit more. So this would be more appropriate. This would be good. Not terrible. I feel like maybe we can do better. So this is all being lit just from the side. Nothing is being lit overhead. Let's just walk around a little bit more up here and experiment. If we walk away from the big open window there, these other ones have cellular shades in front of them, so it's gonna, be so it's gonna soften the light just a little bit. Come back here into the kitchen, same kind of thing. So I don't know, that looks decent. The leg check is the thing for me because this is what's kind of, you know, it really requires good light to really come out. It's a little, uh, a little softer right there. So I don't think that necessarily works for me. Now I'm not also gonna try some things that may not always be smart, but you can see the further we get away from those windows, they kind of lose their impact a little bit. So what if we're right here now, we're back into silhouette mode, so that doesn't work. So now the front over here, the front door, what if we, you know, if we put the front door behind the camera, now we're still pointed at these windows back behind me, but they're so far back, they kind of blend in with the light of the room. So this actually doesn't look too bad. The legs seem like they're coming in just a little bit more here. So this would be a possibility. This is something that could potentially work. I'm not too upset about that. What if I use the door as a backdrop? 
Now you can see we've got these side lights right here, so that's just terrible. We can tell that's not going to work. I know from previous experience, none of the other rooms up here get enough light to really justify even trying to use them right now. So rather than carry you downstairs, we're going to do a soft cut and I'll meet you up with you down there. Okay, so now we're down in the basement. Now this is usually where I take my progress picks, but I also usually take them early in the morning on Saturday before the sun comes up. So things are going to look a little bit different down here with natural light creeping in through the door and the windows back here. Um, the other thing about the basement is we have 10 foot ceilings in here. So um, all of the lights are floodlights in the ceiling as well. So you can see behind me here, I have some control over what I turn on and off. I would say maybe let's try these off. And then what I've found before that usually works the best is back in this corner over here. This is where I usually take them. There's one light here that's kind of shining down and I'm going to position it between the camera and me. So this is the spot where I usually take my picks. And so imagine also this is usually black um, just because I'm usually taking these in the morning. So uh, it's going to look a little bit different right now, but as you can see, the overhead lighting is a lot more dramatic. So now the thing about that is it may not be exactly true to life. The more dramatic something is, uh, the more uh, flattering it's going to make you look, which isn't necessarily always what we want, but I do find this to be a pretty accurate representation usually. Um, and also notice like, um, you know, your upper body can certainly cast some shadows on your lower body, but the leg separation here, it's coming out pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with this spot. This usually looks pretty good. Now also behind the camera here is just a blank wall. So what if we take this light source here out of the picture just by turning the situation around a little bit and still I want the camera so the light shines down right about here so the camera is just that that side of it and I'm going to be just this side of it now how does this look it's a little less dramatic I feel like this works pretty well it's maybe not quite as uh, not quite as much detail as before and you can play around with just subtle changes and how you move things around here. Just small little angle adjustments, maybe pull the camera towards the light a little bit more and me back up from it a little bit more. See what a difference that makes there? That was a very subtle change of about six inches. And now what if I wanna stand directly under the light and then move the camera back just far enough so that it can see all of me? Well, you can see now everything's in shadow, so that doesn't work. So you've gotta give the light room to work, but if you have the light come down kind of right on top of the camera, and then step back from it. That works pretty well. I kind of like that. There are some hazards with little pieces of dog food all over the ground here. So I'm stepping on dog food Legos the whole time. That's not fun. Um, let's check out a couple other spots though and see what we have over here. So if we get closer to the window, I've experimented with this before. So this is something where we start to lose the benefit of our overhead light and we get something that really just tends to wash everything out. So. This is not an inaccurate representation of how I look, but it is gonna hide a lot of that detail. You can see that nothing really jumps out as much over here. And when you've got progress photos that you're trying to either evaluate for yourself or send to somebody else, I always find it best to overdo it on the dramatic lighting a little bit, just to make sure that whoever you're sending it to can see everything that's there, even if it's not always present to the degree in which you show it in the pictures. Um, just because they can see, you know, what the potential really looks like and what can be there. If we turn around here and use this door as a backdrop. So the problem here is most of my light is coming from this side. So this side of my body is going to be well lit and this side is going to be in shadow. So it may make things appear asymmetrical. Like we can see now this leg generally just shows a little bit more separation than this one anyway, but now it's really evident. So, and a lot of that's just because of lighting. Um, what if we use this wall that the stairs are on as a backdrop here. Does this make any sense at all? No, not really. Okay, so see process of elimination. And I tell you, once you find the right spot for this, this is not something that I do every week. So once you find the right spot, you're going to be in good shape. Now, one thing that a lot of people do is they rely on the bathroom for progress picks. So um, this bathroom is really well lit. I have a couple of different LED bulbs in here just because I wanted to get a little bit more of a uh, an outdoor light sensation. So I've got a couple different lights I can play around with. So this is with the um, with the camera pretty much right in the doorway and me just a few feet inside of it. So you can see right here, not bad, pretty good. But again, everything over here is in shadow and there's not much I can do about that. Now, if I turn on the other light in the bathroom, 
right here, that does nothing. So now I'm, I'm backlit as well, and it's, it's causing the, uh, the camera's light balance to adjust in a non-favorable way. Now what if I turn off this main light here? That's terrible. But then we can turn things around, get the camera inside the bathroom. And so now we do have a little dividing wall right here. You can kind of see this dividing wall. So the light that's right up there it's not gonna make it back here. So you can see shadow, 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 a little bit of light over here, but not much, not a lot of detail creeping in. So if we shut the door, turn this light back on, a little bit, not much. And if we turn this one off, I mean, yeah, from this pose, that looks great, but you know, it's not really a, not really a good optimal setup for much of anything. The only other thing that might work is if I put this camera like right here, so the light right there is casting on me pretty effectively. It's kind of a cramped space. I don't have a lot of room to work, but this is not a bad setup. So, you know, in a given spot, you can find a lot of things that potentially work. Some work better than others, um, but let's do one more thing and let's try going outside and see what we see out there. So, my dog's gonna freak out when I open the door. Taz, you wanna go outside, buddy? Of course he wants to go outside. Okay. Go chase squirrels or something. So we can just try a little natural lighting outdoors on the patio out here and see what we see. So this is with the sun at the back. Now it's difficult for me to see the screen out here. So that's one limiting factor. I can't necessarily see what's going on. I also have a ceiling over me here. So I have our patio ceiling set up. So I'm not getting any light down directly on me. If I turn this around, Again, I'm not able to see the screen all that well, but I feel like this works okay. This isn't too bad, so this would be an option. But again, this is something that is seasonal. In the winter, are you gonna wanna come outside and take your progress pics when it's 15 degrees out here? I don't know, I might not, I might not. Now what if I take you out in the yard where I can actually get some sun? I just have to be careful where I step. Keep in mind, we've got two dogs. Now really, I can't see a thing out here. I feel like there's a lot of shadow and again, being outdoors, it makes things a little bit more difficult to reproduce from one week to the next. So, you know, levels of sunlight, time of day, season of the year, all those things are going to have big, big fluctuations in how your progress looks from progress picks look from one week to the next. So I think I'm going to stick with that one that we saw under the floodlight back there. So let's go on to step two. We'll talk about flaring our lats and then we'll jump into the quarter turns. Okay, so flaring your lats is a critical skill. And we're just gonna go over a couple points right here that are gonna help try and get things engaged. So first of all, when I talk about flaring your lats, I'm talking about your lat muscles right here. For those who have used a more casual uh, term, maybe you call it your flying squirrel muscles. That's what we're trying to see. So we wanna flare those suckers out. The idea being, make your waist appear smaller, make your shoulders appear broader, and give you a nice taper going from, uh, going from below to above. So um, in practice, it looks like this. So you can see things are flared, they're engaged. Now the background behind me makes this a little bit tricky. That's another thing to consider when you pick your location is, you know, what, what's behind you and is it gonna be distracting? So that bookcase kind of sucks a little bit, but there we've got flared lats, so awesome. Now, also I can tell you my lats are flared right now. So a lot of people equate flare your lats with stick your arms out to the side like a, like a doofus, and that's not what you have to do at all. So what you can, if your lats are engaged, if they are flexed, then they are flared. So they're flared right now. I've got them engaged right now. You can see right there, there's not a lot of, not a lot of give, not a lot of wiggle right there. So they're, they're flexed and they're engaged. And I can walk around like this pretty much all day as long as I think about it, it's not a big deal because I've been practicing this for a long time. It's all up here. It's a skill that you learn and get better at. So um, now what we do and why we pose like that is you get your arms out from your body a little bit so then you can see them. Like they're, fle they're flared right now, but you can't see them. So you've got to give them a little room to breathe so that you can see that taper and create it. So then how do you do it? Well, it starts by getting really good at manipulating your shoulders. So start with your shoulder protraction, roll your shoulders forward, shoulder retraction, pin them back behind you. Protraction, retraction, protraction, retraction. And as you do that, just start to feel what the lats are doing there. They might not be doing a whole lot, but if you do it enough and like, you know, Roll your shoulders forward and then just squeeze everything right here. You'll notice like your lats kind of want to jump into the party there and get and squeeze as well. You pull them back, they can do the same thing. You feel them squeezing down a little bit lower here. So again, it's forward, 
and back, forward and back. And so this kind of warms up the lats and gets a little bit of blood in there and they're always a little bit easier to manipulate once you do that. What I usually recommend getting into for a posture to start with this is roll your shoulders forward, like really like stretch your traps out behind your back, roll your shoulders forward, and then lift your sternum up and make yourself as tall as possible and let your shoulders fall back into a neutral position when you do that. Now, that kind of gets your lats set up to the point where then you can flare them. And I don't think you'll probably be able to see this, but you create a little bit more tension in there. And it's almost like, you know, if somebody was holding your hand out here and you were trying to pull against it, well, it's your lat that's gonna be doing that pulling. And, and your pecs as well, but your lats are gonna be responsible for that. So there, there isn't a magic secret for this. If you do a YouTube search for how to flare your lats, you're gonna find a whole bunch of videos where everybody says, I've got the solution. And I can tell you, none of them are the solution for everybody. One of them may be the solution for you. Now, what I wanna impress upon you is it's important to figure out how to do it so watch all of those and practice it until it clicks. Try what I'm showing you here. That may work great. It may not do anything for you. Great, do the search, move on down to the next video and try it. There's a whole bunch of different techniques in there. One of them is gonna make sense and click in here. Keep working on it until you try it, get used to it and then master it from there. Okay, and finally let's talk quarter turns here. So now when doing these poses, first of all, always have your phone in portrait mode Turn that way, as opposed to how you're watching it now in landscape mode. I have it in landscape mode because I'm posting this on YouTube, and if you post a video in portrait mode on YouTube, you're officially a stupid jackass. And I don't want to be labeled like that, so I'm doing it in landscape mode. The downside is you're not going to be able to see my feet. So I'm going to tell you what they're doing. You also can't see my head, but trust me, you can hear what I'm saying, so it's all good. So what we're going to do here is front pose. So we're going to start, I want your feet about shoulder width apart. And then you're going to bend your knees just to soften them a little bit so they're not locked out. So if you lock your knees and then flex your quads, you're gonna get a little bit of detail and separation in there. But if you bend your knees and then try to push your legs forward at the knee, you're gonna get a lot more separation that shows up in there. And then from there, it's all about making yourself as tall as possible, expand the rib cage, suck in the waist, flare the lats, shoulders up so they look nice and round, tense the arms a little bit, keep your hands relatively relaxed, and there you go. You can flex your abs a little bit, squeeze and bear down on them like so. They do a little bit. What you don't wanna do is go like this and crunch down and think this is my abdominal pose. No, it's not. That's a common mistake. People make that all the time. That's the last thing you should worry about. Get your legs set, waist in, chest up, shoulders up, lats flared, and then without changing any of that, give them a little squeeze. You can pull up a little bit if you like. You can wear them down, up, whatever looks best. And then we're gonna transition into the side pose. Just like this. So same thing, this leg, the one showing the camera, is gonna be tensed, so you're gonna get as much weight on that foot as you possibly can. You're gonna squeeze the obliques here, again, chest up. You're gonna rotate at the shoulders a little bit so we can see this side of the chest, so we can see the back shoulder a little bit as well. Keep everything tense, suck this in. That's the hard part here. And just hold like that. If you want, you can straighten this back arm, try to show a little bit of tricep there. And you can also lean yourself towards the camera a little bit so this front shoulder is slightly lower. Now the back pose, because of the way sound works, I won't be able to talk to you while I'm doing it. I will tell you it's largely the same as the front pose. Foot positioning is the same. Instead of flexing the quads, you're going to try and activate and engage the hamstring. I'll show you what I mean. And then the, the setup here is all the same. For the front pose, if you can see here, I'm usually going to be set up just like this with my shoulders kind of neutral. On the back pose, I'm going to arch everything back just a little bit more so I can get the spinal erectors engaged and it makes it a little bit easier to squeeze everything back, but I'll also show you what not to do. So first of all, what not to do is this. So when you pull the shoulders back like that, you're removing any and all width you have through the back and the shoulders. So don't retract the scapula, which looks like this. I mean, you wouldn't have a front pose that looks like this. You want a front pose that looks like this with everything spread out. You want to show width. So that's what your back pose should look like too. Hamstrings engaged. And there you go. And then the other side pose is just the same. So again, your weight bearing down on the leg closest to the camera. Torso rotated slightly, obliques tight, shoulder, arm tight, chest. 
just like that. And then you face front, same thing. So go through that mental checklist. Everything starts with your foot positioning. We want quads engaged, midsection, chest, shoulders up, lats flared, abs. Just like that, nice and easy. And there you have it. Now, it wasn't that easy. So we went on a tour of the place. We experimented with a lot of different lighting locations. We got a little bit of a quick primer on how to flare your lats and then walk through all the quarter turns as well. So you've got a good idea of um, what to do, what we're looking for, how to pose correctly. One other thing that's worth noting here is posing is important because, yeah, I mean, when you're taking your pictures, it's what you use to showcase your physique and show the progress that you're making. So you need to be able to contort your body appropriately so that whatever changes are actually happening are easier to see for the camera. Uh, but also, it's an exercise in mind-muscle connection. One thing that I always tell people is, um, you may be able to go through a back workout and activate things, but if you don't know how to flare your lats and actually get them engaged, like what we looked at in step two of this video, then your ability to activate your lats is gonna be minimized. It, you're not gonna be taking full potential of them. And so once you learn how to do that, you improve your mind-muscle connection with that muscle that's really difficult to cue into for a lot of people. Um, you're gonna improve your pose and you're gonna improve your back workouts as well. Same thing applies for every muscle group. The more control you have over it, the more you can fire it during a workout. So don't dismiss all this stuff as just being something for only your progress pictures or being something that only competitors need to worry about. Anybody who is a bodybuilder, meaning if you are following some kind of plan and lifting and doing cardio for the purpose of building muscle and losing body fat, one maybe more than the other. If that's your goal, I define you as a bodybuilder, and so this stuff is going to be useful for you. So uh, once again, uh, I'm Darren, signing out. So you can check out my website, 5 starphysiquecom That's star with two R's. You can go to my podcast website, which is thedropset.com. You can subscribe to that via Spotify and iTunes. Put out a couple episodes weekly. Follow there. Ask questions. Fire away. Thedropset.com has contact information for everything else. So check it out there. Look forward to hearing back from you.